I think as women, sometimes we don't recognize how powerful it is to a man for us to be happy and for us to show uh, our happiness. Like a man, when he knows he's pleased us, I don't think as women we recognize how powerful that is to a man. Now you're a man, you can back me up on this, but I don't yeah. think we recognize that. No, this is the only reason men leave, well, there's two reasons, but the main reason men leave women. And I've seen a lot of men who wanted to get divorced from their wives and I've helped them change by recognizing their mistakes. They always say, no matter what I do, it's never enough to make her happy. That's it. That's the mantra of the unhappy husband. Oh, she's never happy. I did this, it wasn't enough for her. She always has a complaint. It's like a, it's like a never ending neediness. I can't give her whatever I do. There's always something wrong. I mean, that's another one, annoying thing. I do whatever I did, but you didn't do this. But why didn't you do that? Questioning, that's another annoying thing. So it's ultimately, if you want men to be engaged and involved, you have to have priorities. What's the most important thing in your life? Uh, a clean house, clean dishes, uh, everything on time, ship top perfection everywhere, or having a happy life, having someone who adores you and loves you and wants to take care of you, would give his life for you without hesitating. Now that's the main thing is a woman's happiness. And if, now, this is not an absolute requirement, but if your goals are to have um, passion, well, the kind of passion you'd have when you, when you make love, uh, you have to have good sexual skills and you have to enjoy sex just as much as him. So there's never a man, in my experience, who left a woman who was having regular orgasms. Okay, because that is maximum female happiness. But there's other ways if you, if you don't have that inclination and that's not a big motivation for you. It's basically a woman's happiness. But one form of happiness is sexual fulfillment. And uh, if a woman has enough estrogen in order to have orgasms. Now, unfortunately, women don't have training in how to have orgasms. Men don't have training in how to give women orgasms. There's lots of books available. I've written a book called Mars, Venus in the Bedroom. There's classes you can take, online classes on particularly becoming very popular about women uh, learning how to have orgasms. But the, an orgasm is maximum pleasure in your body and a moment of surrender and openness and pure love. And as I said, love is scary. And when, you, when you're a woman and you open your heart in an orgasm, you bond to the man. You become, I need you. I depend on you. That's what estrogen is, is I'm, I need you and I depend on you. And that's a very scary place unless you also have a life which is not just dependent on a man. You see, you want to depend on a man for what a man can give you, but you want to depend on yourself for what you can give yourself. You want to depend on your children to give you opportunities for unconditional love. You want to depend upon education so that you're always growing. You want to depend upon the divine or the higher power so you feel you're not alone in this world. You know, there's a lot of different needs that we have. And if you're not aware of all your different needs and how important they are, uh, then suddenly a man becomes your big need. And he should just be one of many. He's dessert as far as I look at it. Now, uh, you know, the, from my point of view, my wife was dessert, although... <laughs> Uh, she wouldn't take that as a compliment, but <laughs> I do, okay? Which is, you know, just, hey, honey, you've got an amazing life. I just want to be dessert, you know, that that's okay. But um, but she, she, to me, is the finest dessert in the world. You, you can't replace that one. But, you know, I have my work. We all have our work. You know, that's so fulfilling. And, and relationship is so fulfilling. And children is so fulfilling. And, you know, some people aren't going to have children. And some people aren't going to have sex. You know, but they'll find for them what their needs are. But if, if you're, for your soul, sex is important to you and you're denying that, uh, you'll be too needy for other things. So we want to get neediness out of our life. And, again, one of the symptoms of neediness is demanding someone to change for you to be happy. That's neediness. Needing is uh, what a person has available to you. You appreciate it. And you know, if I'm hungry, I eat food, I get it, and then I'm done. I don't keep wanting more and more. So when we want more and more than what's available to us, that's needy 
And that makes women become more critical, more demanding, more controlling, more um, nagging. And just shift gears. The whole thing is a flexibility and focusing on other things make me happy through what I say and do other than just my partner. Yeah. Uh, one other, just real quick one on that one is there's a tendency when, for women who say, yeah, I can't depend on my partner. So I have my friends and I have this and I have this. Friends is another big need we have. Uh, and I have this and I have this and I had this, but secretly in their side saying, yeah, I have to depend on my friends because I can't depend on my husband. Mm -hmm. So they use that same philosophy I just said, which is if you're not getting from your partner, get it somewhere else, as opposed to get certain things from your partner and get other things from others. And that is healthy. And that's how life is. It's not to be resented, uh, you know, because I've seen people do that. They kind of go, yeah, I can't get it from my husband. So I have my friends to do that. And I go, wait a second, what are you talking about? You know, what do you have from your husband? Well, that's, that's in the ballpark of what a husband should provide for you. And often husbands will not provide everything that they should provide for you. One lack of education. But what I've seen mainly is when you need more than what a man can provide, he stops giving. That's it. You know, it's, if you have complaints and criticism, you can tell me all day long, all the things that are wrong and you're right. And I would feel what you feel if I was a woman, no problem with that. But how are you contributing to the problem? Holding on to those negative emotions, those resentments, those judgments, the blame, all that stuff gets stuck in our brain. I remember doing a show with Oprah and she said, yeah, it's like giving free rent to your past, keeping you from being able to appreciate what you have in the now. Well, yeah, that's really powerful. So it's in part knowing and being in tune enough with our own needs to know how to ask for what we want and need. And then it's also not expecting one single person, this partner, to meet all of our needs and recognizing that it's healthy for us to still have other relationships and other outlets for interests and passions and to have other needs met. Like I believe, you know, having been married now for almost 14 years myself and spending a long time being single, I believe it's really important to maintain our individuality, our friendships. I think women need other women as far as friendships for us to really feel good and for us to look at how we can get our various needs met because that's a huge weight to put on the shoulders of any one individual person. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right.